In this sixth and likely final video in our series on making a JSON uh, service from Perl and MySQL, we are going to build on what we've already done in the past. We have created a Perl script that's going to print out JSON data. And what we want to do now is we want to have that Perl script accept a parameter. And it will run a query based on that parameter and give us results based on that parameter. So by parameter, we're going to use typical web syntax, which is the URL, the full URL to the Perl script, then a question mark, and then name, and then value. Uh, the name could be something like a search term, maybe. So we could say search term equals ang. Let's go ahead and go with that. So I'm going to go to my Perl script. I'm going to go towards the top. And what I want to do is get the value that corresponds to that search term. And so with this query equals new CGI, what I can do is I can say dollar sign query and then dash greater than symbol and then say param open paren and it will automatically give me a closed paren. Single quote and then we called it search term. So search term. Capitalization and spelling are both very important here. Okay, terminate with a semicolon, and we can assign that to a variable by saying my dollar sign search term equals query param search term. What that's going to do is that will take the value that's after the equal sign for search term and assign it to this variable search term. Now what we can do is we can go to our query and we currently have it hard-coded. We have select ID, common name, genus, species, cultivar from plants where common name like ANG. What I can do is I can replace that with dollar sign search term and it will insert that search term in this query. So let's save and then I'm going to upload. Okay, and yes. Just to confirm that things still work as they do, I'll leave the search term as AGN, and we should get the same value here, Southern Magnolia and Magnus Coneflower. So I leave the search term AGN, refresh, we get the same value. Now let me change the search term to Magnolia, and we should only get the Magnolia. Sure enough, look, we only get the Magnolia. Uh, now I also have a pawpaw in here. So what if I change search term to pawpaw? What we should see is, give it a moment to refresh, we should only get the pawpaw in return. And if I give it a completely invalid term, there we go, there's our common pawpaw. If I give it a completely invalid term, it should give me nothing at all, just an empty collection. We can feed this term from a variety of sources. We can feed it from a web form if we want. We can also feed it from an Android app, uh, something like a search on an Android app, which is what we will do. As we have it now, this is very good. But what about this? Let's remember what our database looks like. What we're going to see is we have several columns that we could search across. So if we look at our table, uh, we will see that we have common name, genus, species, and cultivar. And we want to be able to search across any of these. So just a moment. Uh, common name, family, genus, species, cultivar, notes, so on and so forth. There are several. Uh, for our case, we're just going to worry about common name, genus, species, cultivar, and common name. Uh, yeah, sorry, I got that one already. So we can use a little trick in database language. We already have our like so we say common name like search term where this is a wild card. What I can do is I can say or, and this will essentially combine together a series of queries. So or, and then I can paste, copy and paste common name like search term, this time change it to genus. And then I can say or again and paste, and this time change it to species. And then I can say or one more time and paste, and this time we will say cultivar. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a wildcard search to check for the search term across several columns, cultivar, species, genus, and common name, which means 
that the search term needs to only be in one of those for the query to return the result. I'll go ahead and upload here and we'll try this again. So it's a bit more flexible search and why is that important? Uh, that's important because uh, if we consider mobile design we have to maximize the use of our real estate and we want to be able to uh, consolidate what we have on our screen. We don't want to overpopulate the screen with widgets. So here we have a search where I can say redbud and I can search for eastern redbud or I can search for the species, uh, sorry the genus, Circus, and I will again get eastern redbud or I can search for canadensis and again I will get uh, eastern redbud when I search for these. So I can search for genus, species, or column name. I can do it all in one text box as opposed to having separate text boxes for genus, species, cultivar, and common name. You see the difference in real estate. This takes up four spaces, where this takes up only one. So that's the difference. By using this like and or together, by concatenating with the like and or together, uh, we're able to reduce the amount of widgets that we need to put on the screen. So I'm just going to double check. I have my or cultivar like, or species like, or genus like, and then we start with common name like. And this is all in the where clause. So I save, I've uploaded, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, my search screen, and I'm going to change the search term here to uh, pawpaw, which is the common name for pawpaw. I'm going to change the genus to a semina, and we'll see I still get the same result. I can search either for pawpaw, which is the common name, or a semina, which is the genus name, get the same result. Now let's try the species name. I try the species name, Triloba, I get the same result. Just to make sure this isn't hard coded, I'll put in magnolia. And we get our southern magnolia. I can put in southern or any part of the word southern. And again, same result. I can put in the species name, Grand, if I can just put in Granda if I want, because I only need part of the word and still the same result. So we see what we get here is a little bit of magic by using this OR clause and also the uh, wildcard. So that wraps it up. We've now created a JSON service. Uh, let's see, I'll put in a really easy search term. I'll put in the letter E. And you see with that, we're going to get almost all of our results because they nearly all have an E in them. So, uh, and this is still perfectly legal JSON. If I copy and I put into the online viewer text, and I paste, we go to viewer, it's still going to let us walk down this tree of JSON to plants to name value pairs in this array. So perfectly legal JSON, and we're using a wildcard search to make it more efficient. This wraps up the series on creating a JSON web service, or a JSON service rather, uh, using Perl and MySQL. I hope you appreciated it. I hope you liked it. Uh, as always, I welcome your comments, and I look forward to seeing how it's going. Thank you.